morning, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. Uh, wait a little bit as people are uh, jumping on. But man, it's another amazing day uh, to be uh, alive. It's another amazing day to um, be a Steelers fan. Uh, I know there's tons of Steelers fans out there. Some of you guys are probably hating on me that right now, world. Um, so it's super cool. But man, so glad you guys are on here. Um, and so we're gonna get started today. And um, I uh, kind of the title for today is just I, I believe that fear um, will kill, destroy your purpose. Um, yesterday I talked about like just uh, purpose and meaning and the fact that God has uh, great things for us. And I believe that when we're fearful, it's a killer of purpose. And I believe the enemy uses fear all the time to hinder the movement of the gospel. Um, and so I've been talking about and I said, hey, um, I want us to be um, just letting each other know, like, what are we doing uh, to help others? Because realistically, in every and um, everything that's going on right now, there's a purpose and a, and, a, and a reason for everything. But God also has a purpose and plan for you. So I'll throw just a few things that I've been doing. So uh, we've got a partnership with the Berkeley Police Department, and um, and so as and it's not just me; it's our team. So our team's been writing letters, and we've been sending them out to police officers. And so uh, last night I got a message from. Um, Emily uh, Murphy, and she's one of the uh, police officers in Berkeley, just thanking us for uh, the encouraging words. Um, and it's just, it really is the little things. Like, I feel like there's so many times when we're trying to figure out, like, like what, do we, what do we need to do? Uh, hey, Mark, evangelist on there, Mark. Hey, guys. Um, we're trying to figure out, like, what do we do? Like, there's so much going on. We've got so much going on in our lives. And um, what are the little things that we can do to serve and love others? You know, Jesus said it so clear. Uh, they were asking him, like, what? Um, uh, what's the greatest commandment? He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And so in these morning uh, kind of conversations, devotions, I just want to encourage and push the envelope when it comes to like, man, like you've got something specific that God wants you to do. Yesterday I said, man, we've all been created for purpose. And instead of worrying about tomorrow, although, uh, man, I know we need to plan and think about tomorrow. Like what is and what are you doing today in order to accomplish your purpose? Another great thing I had the opportunity to do is I was talking to a planter who's planting down in LA and um, he's planting the same time I'm planting in September and just trying to figure out like, what do we, what, do, what does he do in this context? So I got to take um, about an hour to sit, talk with him. Our team's gonna help their team out. Um, and so I just wanna encourage you guys, like be thinking about what are you doing to help others? Um, and so today we're talking about fear is the killer of purpose. And so I believe that if you allow fear to control your mind and your heart, um, it will kill your purpose because the enemy knows that if he can keep you fearful and worrying about what you like, what you're trying to get um, working in your life, what the things that you need, when you're worrying about that, you're not thinking about others. Um, and so I, I said this fear is the killer of purpose. And so this morning, um, I just randomly turned to Psalms 91. Uh, and I just want to read this passage. And I actually today want to ask you questions to just stimulate thought around fear and worry and stimulate thought about God. Like, who do you say he is? Um, who do you believe God to be in this season? Is he a different God than he was before the pandemic? Uh, is he a, is he a different God than he was before you lost your job, or is he a different God before um, you saw that your finances are struggling? Like, is God the same God? And if he is the same God, then what should we believe about him? Um, and so, if you guys have your Bible, it's super simple. I'm going to read Psalms 91, and uh, we're going to go verse three four and five. And I just want you to listen to the words that the psalmist wrote and then think, man, how applicable are these words for today? Um, and this is what it says. I love uh, the real Bible, like holding the paper Bible. So I got my paper Bible. So if you got yours, you can do digital or whatever. Um, but these may be some scriptures that you may want to underline. But it says this in Psalms 91 uh, verse three, it says, for he will rescue you from the trap and protect you from deadly diseases. I'm going to read that again. It's so such a now word. It says right here, Psalms 91, for he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from the deadly diseases. Can I get an amen? Does anyone think, wow, that's an applicable word for today? Um, that, you know, I always tell people this, that the word is um, effective and active for everyday life. And so it says, for he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly diseases. But it goes on from there and it says, Number four, he will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises 
are your armor and protection. Come on, that is so good. And then the last, the last verse, verse six says this, do not dread the diseases that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Listen, I don't know about you, uh, but I feel like that's a now word, even though it's from the Psalms, um, you know, thousands of years ago. But when this Psalm was penned, um, I believe that God pen, allowed him to pin it because we can apply it to where we are today. And so today I just wanted to say, let's not allow fear to control us. Let, let's not let a pandemic uh, control us and stop us from living out the life that God is calling us to live because our purpose is found in accomplishing God's will. And when we are caught up in fear and doubt and worry, it stops and hinders us from doing what God has called us to do. So I want you to, to go ahead and write in the comments and say, I'm not going to allow fear to kill my purpose. Um, and so I, I just wrote down six questions, six simple questions that I would encourage you. Um, you know, you don't necessarily have to write them down, but if you got a pen, you can write them down. But, but question number one, do you believe that God is in control? I just want to pause there and I want to ask you, do you believe that God is in control? Because if you believe that God is in control, then that means that all the things that you're thinking about and worrying about, you know that, man, if I just place those things in God's hands, he will protect me. It reminds me of the disciples when they're um, on the water and they're out in a boat and the storm comes. And right at that moment, fear is welling up, but Jesus was in control the entire time. The entire time. I love the way uh, uh, that passage says it in Mark where it says, um, the disciple says, what manner of man is this that even the, the winds and the waves obey him? Like that's the God that we serve. So do you believe that God's in control because the winds obey him, the waves um, obey him, uh, the earth obeys him. He is our creator. So that's number one. Second question is, do you believe that nothing surprises him? That's one of my favorite things that I like to talk to people about. Like, do you believe that nothing surprises God? Do you? Let me know. Write it in there. Do you believe it? Do you believe that nothing surprises God? Because if you believe that, that means that whatever's happening in your life, he knows it and he's not surprised by it. And that's got to be like a an encouraging thing for each of us that God is not surprised by anything going on in our lives. He's not surprised. Someone right in there, not surprised. Um, now, there are many times in our lives when we're surprised. Hey, good morning. Uh, there's many times in our lives when we are surprised by things, but we, we serve a God who's, who's not surprised. So do you believe that he's not surprised? Number, number three, do you believe he's bigger than a pandemic? This is an important question because it is ravaging our entire world. And so the question is, do you believe that God is bigger than this pandemic? Um, I would encourage you that we serve a God who's way bigger than this pandemic and he's got a plan. And so in the midst of that plan, it's us realizing, man, like when we serve a God that's bigger than a pandemic, we put all the needs that we have in his hands and we say, God, I'm here. I love uh, Galatians where it says, I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. I had a friend that said it this way. I'm going to steal it. He said, um, I've been bought with a price. Spend me. Think about that. I've been bought with a price. Spend me. Spend me. How many of you guys want to be spent by God? How many of you guys want God to, to take all parts of your life and use it to accomplish his will? Not to drain you, not to stretch you out, but to use you so that you can help others. There are so many people right now that don't have hope. Right now, there's so many people that don't have anything to look forward to. Right now, they are struggling. And so I'm encouraging you, let's be the people that uh, dispense hope. Let's be people who dispense love. Let's be the people who serve. Like um, uh, some of our team went to uh, the Berkeley School District, and so they asked us to come back. And so um, we're going back today, I think it is. Yeah, Wednesday. And um, man, just serving, dispensing hope. They don't know, they don't know who... God is right now, but they do know that there's families that don't have computers that we can serve. And so, man, if we don't get allow um, fear to get control of us and kill our purpose, man, we can be out serving and helping people. Um, so that's that. Uh, number four, do you believe he turns everything for good? Do you? Do you believe that God will turn everything for good? Everything. 
that he can find purpose in the negative, that he can take what was hard and difficult and turn it into something that is beautiful and amazing. And I believe that that's the type of God that we serve, that when, when things are, are the worst and the hardest, the light of heaven can come up. It can, it can stream out of us, lit, uh, come from us, and it can turn what situations that seem so dire into something that's so amazing and so great. So that's that. Number five, do you believe he can rescue and protect, protect you? Because I believe that God can rescue and protect you. And do you believe his promises are true? Uh, for today, I just want to encourage you, don't allow fear to kill your purpose. Um, but instead, rise up and, uh, you know, as you, if this is the beginning of your day and we get done with this, uh, this conversation, I want to encourage you that you get up and um, you just begin to pray. And part of that prayer is listening. I know that's that's difficult, and this is this discussion was not over listening. But I want to encourage you, like um, maybe stop talking for a little bit and just just listen to God. Um, allow God to speak to your heart. Um, let him uh, let him begin to guide you. Uh, I got this vision today. This is um, uh, I'm a journaler, so this is my my big journal. And so I've been praying about you know God like direction as we're planting this church and. Um, you know, I want to set vision, but I want to make sure that, man, whatever vision I'm setting is is clear and it's coming from God, but that I'm also not like dictating it on our team, but encouraging our team to be a part of it. And uh, this morning I was praying because I was like, God, I just I just want to make sure that wherever I'm going, whatever I'm doing is where you're guiding and leading me. And so God gave me uh, this picture and he said, um, you're think of it like a, a train track. And he says, I've actually laid the train track. And not only have I laid the train track, I'm the conductor on the train. And so it was almost God saying, man, you're going the right direction and um, you're not even conducting it. I'm conducting it. You're just a passenger and you're just following me where you're taking me. And so then he went on to say from there and then also realize that I'm your provider. I'm your source. And so you know, when you're on a train or if, let's say you're on a plane, you're not worrying about there's enough fuel, right? That, that's not you taking care of that. You're not worrying about if there's food um, on the on the train because you're not the conductor, you're not the company, right? And so I felt like God saying, man, I'm the conductor, I'm the tracks, um, I, I'm taking you and you just have to, to, to continue to follow. And so I just wanna encourage you, man, God's got your train. He's your conductor. He's already created the tracks. You just have to stay on the train. I felt like God said, man, the only way that you get off of this is if you get off my train. And the only way to stay on his train is to pray and to seek his face and to make sure that you are following his direction. And so, man, I hope that this was uh, encouraging for you, but better than what I'm saying to you right now, I would say, man, seek the face of God. Uh, the beginning of this passage uh, in 91, it says, those who live in the shelter of the Most High, Most High, will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Now, what does that passage mean? That means that you're seeking the face of God. That means that you are pursuing Him. That means that you are making sure that He's your number one priority, and everything is secondary. And so, I want to encourage you, man, and take on this promise that if you live in the shelter of the Most High, you will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Man, he's a great God. I believe in his promises. I'd encourage you, believe in his promises. Let me pray for you uh, today. Father, I thank you for um, every person that's listening now who will listen later. Um, and I thank you, God, that, um, that you're with us, that we don't have to allow fear to kill our purpose. Father, but that we can um, lay everything that we are at your feet and use our days to bring glory to your name, to be lights, God, to, to love and to serve. And so as we're in this 21 days of purpose, God, where we're, we're choosing every day to live life on purpose, no matter what our society is telling us to do, I want and I ask, God, that you give us the strength in those times when we're struggling, in those times when we're overwhelmed, in those times when we have family members who are sick or if we're sick, God, I just pray that you would allow your Holy Spirit, God, to touch our bodies. I pray that you would allow um, your presence, God, to be with us. Show us that we are not alone. God, you are such a worthy and awesome God. Give us strength today in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, and then I want to encourage you too in the midst of everything going on. Man, enjoy your family. Um, I was working so hard uh, last night and I just felt God say, get off your computer, get your kids in your bed and just put on a movie. I've got 